Now we're going to talk about the buzzsaw. And this is, again, one of those moves that everybody has seen a stick player do or seen them work on um, and is, you know, a stereotypical type of move. From the front, it looks like this. From the side, it looks like this. And there's kind of a, a super fun, really slick way to get into it. You could um, start out just with a uh, propeller and then stick your other hand stick into it. And I'll, I'll give the details. I'm not, not cutting it out yet. But there's another way to get into it that's a, a little bit more comprehensible and doesn't just jump straight into it. So that's the way I'm going to teach you. You want to start out in the idle position. You want your hand sticks so that they are a quarter of the way from the ends. You're going to raise one hand. You're going to lower the other hand. Notice the baton stayed in the same position when I raised this hand and I lowered this hand so that my hand sticks are rotating around the baton, right? Baton stays in the same position. I rotate around that. You're going to start with it perpendicular. Uh, well, I'm sorry. You're going to start with your chest perpendicular to the direction you want your buzz saw to be happening in. So once I get started, I'm actually going to turn and face to my right. So I start out here. I take the hand that's gone down and I point the end of the stick toward my nose. Make sure not to pick your nose with the stick. It hurts a lot. I've tried this move a, n a number of times, and that, that one never felt good. It's not the way to try it. You don't need, don't need trial and error for me to tell you that was a bad idea. So you take that, and you point it towards your nose. And once it gets towards your nose, you push it down, and you go into the uh, buzz saw. So I'm going to start here. One hand goes up. One hand goes down. I lift, and I push down. Now, once you're actually in the buzz saw... You're doing the same thing that you were doing in the um, propeller, and that is that you're touching the baton below its center. So every single touch happens below the center. You follow it around, and usually you're touching it the whole time so that you actually rotate your hand stick toward the middle a bit. And so when you get back to this side, you got to refresh. And then you go around, and then you refresh. And then you go around. And so you gotta keep, you got to keep refreshing. So accept that you're going to do this like little step as you're coming over the top. Because when you're going over the top, what's happening? The other hand stick is holding it on the bottom, right? So it's a perfect time for you to move your, your hand stick into a more convenient position. So let's start again. We're going to go here, and we turn it. And we're doing this. Now, if you remember from the TikTok lesson, I said that the closer to the center you touch it, the slower it's going to turn, right? If you touch it close to the ends, it turns really quick. And if you touch it towards the center, it goes really slow. So try to touch it very close to the center as you're going around because that will slow it down. If that's still not slow enough, you might try letting it touch your chest. I, I would not suggest doing this unless you're really having trouble because it's no fun to get hit by a prop over and over again. It's kind of jarring, and it's not going to be like what your final experience will be like. So if you're really, really stuck on it, hold it so that one hand stick is on one side of the center, the other hand stick is on the other side of the center, and you're going to turn it toward you and stop. And you're going to turn it toward you and stop. And then you're going to turn it toward you and stop. And see, in this way, it's like harder to move your hand sticks around, which I said was a really important part of when you're doing it continuously. So, um, so I really just say do this if you're like so stuck that you're not having fun, right? You've got to figure out how to have fun until you pull the move off. And this, this might give you a little bit of encouragement. Another thing to think about is that if you are um, playing with your hand sticks crossed a lot, then it's more likely that they're going to get locked up inside of each other somehow. So I spent uh, a, 
Okay. Well, to do it to here, I spent uh, maybe an hour or something like that just doing this move before I could do it super solid all the time. But then after another four or five hours of practice, I can play pretty close to the end, no problem. So the closer to the end of your hand sticks you play, the less likely you are to get them wrapped up around each other, which means then you can like move up and move down or turn your hands to the sides or something like that. But, um, but it, it is going to take a little bit of practice. So if I start here, you go one hand up, one hand down, and you can see that I'm touching the baton really close to the ends of my hand sticks, and that way they don't lock up. If I scoot out to here, then right there, that's when they can get locked up. Of course, with good alignment and making sure that you're playing parallel the whole time, this can be avoided. Uh, I think, for me, parallel is less realistic than just scooting it further down on the hand stick. And, um, and if you can scoot it down further on the hand stick, that will increase the accuracy of your, your play. So, um, so it's just good training. And um, what I did was I, uh, I actually walked across the bridge, and I did this for the entire time that I walked across the bridge. It was the St. Charles Bridge, or across the St. Charles River in Boston. And I just walked, I just did this, and uh, after a quarter of a mile of that, I had it. So, um, so if you have an opportunity to walk around while you're doing this, that, that will really help. You might also try bending down, or leaning up, um, and those are some ideas that I have about the bus song.